Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our centering song is As the Deer, which comes to us from the faith we sing, number 2025. Our scripture reading for today comes to us uh, from Psalm 42, and throughout the sermon series, we are reading from, oh man, it's the message. I, had, I grabbed the wrong Bible. I'll read it off the screen. I grabbed the common English Bible. I mixed them up. All right, let us join together in hearing Psalm 42. A white-tailed deer drinks from the creek. I want to drink God, deep droughts of God. I am thirsty for God alive. I wonder, will I ever make it? Arrive and drink in God's presence? I'm on a diet of tears. Tears for breakfast. Tears for supper. All day long, people knock at my door, pestering. Where is this God of yours? These are the things I go over and over, emptying out the pockets of my life. I was always at the head of the worshiping crowd, right out in front leading them all eager to arrive and to worship, shouting praises, singing thanksgiving, celebrating all of us, God's feast. Why are you down in the dumps, dear soul? Why are you crying the blues? Fix my eye on God. Soon I will be praying, praising again. He puts a smile on my face. He's my God. When my soul is in the dumps, I rehearse everything I know of you. From Jordan depths to Hermon Heights, including Mount Mizar, chaos calls to chaos to the tune of Whitewater Rapids. Your breaking surf, your thundering breakers crash and crush me. Then God promises to love me all day, sing songs all throughout the night. My life is God's prayer. Sometimes I ask God, my rock-solid God, why did you let me down? Why am I walking around in tears, harassed by enemies? They're out for the kill, these tormentors with their obscenities, taunting day after day, where is this God of yours? Why are you down in the dumps, dear soul? Why are you crying out the blues? Fix my eyes on God, soon I'll be praising again. He puts a smile on my face, he's my God. Here ends the reading, Spirit of God, stir up your people. Thanks be to God. When I was a kid, we used to go to my aunt's house in Princeton, Iowa, right on. She lived on the Mississippi Riverfront, right across the street. My favorite thing to do when we went to uh, her house was to play with the Star Wars toys that she had. 
It was a set from the Empire Strikes Back, and it was a Hoth Imperial attack base, and it had Luke Skywalker riding a Tauntaun. Now, if you don't know what a Tauntaun is, I looked it up on Google. It says, Tauntauns are a species of snow lizard found roaming the windswept snow plains of Hoth. The Rebel Alliance domesticated this swift creature during their stay on the ice planet and they used the animal for patrol duties outside Echo Base. Now, when I was a kid, I didn't know any, have any idea what any of that meant. I have never seen Star Wars. I just like playing with the toys. In fact, I never actually saw Star Wars until I was probably about 27 years old. I didn't actually watch a lot of movies growing up, not even Star Wars, one of the most popular ones. Flash forward a few years from my childhood, uh, in my 20s, I was having a, a really rough time. A really rough time. The message said, down in the dumps, my soul was. So uh, I, I was curious about this movie Star Wars, so I decided to watch it. And I ended up watching all of the Star Wars movies that had been produced at that time. That's all it took. And suddenly I was hooked on music, I found, or on movies, I was always hooked on music. I was hooked on movies and found something that I loved. I started subscribing to Netflix, getting the DVDs through the mail, constantly updating my cue list, re-watching all of those classics that I missed. It became a lifeline for me during the darkest days of my life. The movies were a way I managed to reconnect with the world. So today is our second series in a second in a sermon series called Soul Reset. I worked at West Music, a larger music retail store, before becoming a pastor. And I remember when my computer didn't work, we'd call the IT department, and their first question was always, have you restarted your computer? Well, uh, the author of this book, Junius Dotson, says we need the same thing for our souls, for our spiritual life, that sometimes we just need a hard reset. So he has some tools, some practices, some lifelines, as I call it, to facilitate that hard reset of the soul. In our scripture reading, Psalm 42, we meet King David at presumably the darkest days of his life. In the Common English Bible, in the translation, it says, My whole being is depressed. Just like a deer that craves streams of water, my whole being craves you, God. David searching for a lifeline. The suggestion that the only possible quenching of his thirst comes from God. Later he says, I remember these things as I bear my soul, how I made my way to the mighty one's abode, to God's own house, the temple. In the past, David's lifeline, David's connection to the rest of the world and to God was the temple. But being separated from that lifeline he says, my tears have been my food both day and night. Why, God, have you forgotten me? One of the most, one of the things I admire most about the Psalms is this experience of grief and hope all at the same time. Even in this one Psalm, David says he's in the darkest days of his life and yet he hopes in God. He tries to tell himself, why are you upset inside? Instead, hope in God. But unfortunately, friends, we know that hope is not always easy to find. Far too often, I think we can take hope for granted. Because what happens when we have no hope? For just as David, we are mere human beings, humbled by dark days, tra tragic circumstances, and yes, hopelessness. The word that most of us might use to describe those dark days is depression. Many of us have been diagnosed by a doctor as having depression, anxiety, or something else. Some of us might be on depression or anti-anxiety medicine right now. But although we might all share that common experience or know somebody who has gone through that, depression is a complex medical disorder with many underlying factors. In fact, I found this quote from uh, an article published by the Harvard Medical School. It's often said that depression results from a chemical imbalance, but that figure of speech doesn't quite capture how complex the disease is. Research suggests that depression doesn't spring from simply having too much 
or too little of a certain brain chemical. Rather, there are many possible connect, uh, causes of depression, including faulty mood regulation by the brain, genetic vulnerability, stressful life events, medications, medical problems. It's believed that all of these things, or several factors, all interact to bring on depression. So in the face of such a complexity of mental health, it would be offensive for me or anyone else to suggest something like prayer as an easy fix, an all-in-one complete cure or a remedy for depression, especially when we don't know the details of, of every individual story. Because in this church, we believe in medicine. We believe in therapy. In fact, we have a therapy group which uses our building. Your stories matters. We also believe in spiritual direction and spiritual practices, including prayer. All of these things are necessary for holistic health, and they all work together in tandem. Prayer can be that lifeline. Prayer can be a connection. Prayer heightens one's sense of security and well-being. It facilitates a shared quest for meaning, purpose, and forgiveness. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is a lifeline. Prayer is one of the many tools in our tool belts for a hard soul reset. But as, you can, as your pastor, I am comfortable confessing that uh, prayer in my personal life is not something that has, has always come natural. In fact, in the beginning of my pastoral ministry, I had this internal struggle. I was looking at myself saying, hey, you're a spiritual leader of people. You're supposed to be, you know, at the top of your spiritual game. And, and yet, I did not pray at home the ways that we normally um, think of prayer. So I had to really think deep and reconsider what my prayer life might look like. And today, I have more confidence than ever in my prayer life. Because I believe prayer can be walking my dog. Prayer can be reading a book. Prayer can be watching a movie like Star Wars. Prayer is simply a lifeline. Prayer is whatever connects us to God and to our fellow human beings. We speak to God in many different ways, in many different spiritual languages. God is always willing to participate in that conversation wherever we find ourselves. God is listening and God is responding. So most recently, one of my forms of prayer, especially during this pandemic time, uh, one of my lifelines has been vinyl, vinyl records. In fact, Dave Fletcher upstairs, I think Dave, yeah, there he is, uh, graciously gifted me a big box of vinyl records, which I've been going through in the past couple months. Um, Fridays, one of my Sabbath practices has been to take a hot cup of coffee and go downstairs and just sit and listen to a jazz record from the beginning to the end. And for me, that's a form of prayer. So if I would have uh, titled this sermon, sometimes we write sermons a little late or finish them a little late in the week. Um, if, if I would, had been more prepared, I would have called this sermon A Love Supreme. One of the most famous jazz records of all times was called A Love Supreme by Mr. John Coltrane. This uh, A Love Supreme was recorded in one session, December 9, 1964, John Coltrane quartet, including Jimmy Garrison on bass, Elvin Jones on drums, McCoy Tyner on piano. A Love Supreme had an enormous personal significance for this man, John Coltrane. And the reason was, in 1957, um, he kind of collapsed. He had a meltdown. Uh, he had one of the best jobs in jazz. He was touring with Miles Davis, which I'm sure you've all heard of. Um, but he had become addicted to heroin and to alcohol, to the point where... He became so erratic that Miles Davis fired him um, after they walked off stage at a show. That caused some type of spiritual awakening in John Coltrane. We don't know what, quite what happened. Um, six years later, after um, this soul-searching, he wrote an album uh, based on a poem that he wrote called The Love Supreme. And it goes a little bit like this. I will do all I can to be worthy of thee, O Lord. It all has to do with it. Thank you, God. Peace. There is none other. God is. and It is so beautiful. Thank you, God. God is all. Help us to resolve our fears and weaknesses. Because in all things, 
and you all things are possible. Thank you, God. We know God made us so. Keep your eye on God. God is, he always was, he always will be. No matter what, it is God. He is gracious and merciful. It is most important that I know thee. Words, sounds, speech, men, memory, thoughts, fears, and emotions, time, all related, all made from one, all made in one. Blessed be his name. Thought waves, heat waves, all vibrations, all paths lead to God. Thank you, God. So that's just half of this poem that John Coltrane wrote. Um, it's pretty long. On the last track of the album, which is actually called Psalm, which I think is just wonderfully appropriate, uh, John Coltrane plays this poem word for word on his saxophone. For in the words, for in his words, thought waves, heat waves, and I'll add the addition sound waves, all vibrations are all paths that lead to God. Because poetry and music are lifelines. Poetry and music are just one of the unending examples of prayer. So looking back when I was experiencing the darkest days of my life in my 20s, pretty much the entire decade, my biggest regret was not telling anyone. Not asking for help in some, until something happened. But, to be honest with you, I didn't know that I could. I didn't know the words, or I couldn't physically get them out. I don't know what it was. Sometimes depression comes in waves, and you don't recognize it at the time. Whatever it was, I became paralyzed by hopelessness, convinced that there were no answers to be found. Now, friends, I don't profess to have the answers. I still don't have the answers. None of us have the answers. John Coltrane didn't have the answers. Not even King David had all the answers. But what I do know is that there is love to be found. There is a love supreme. Not a quick fix cure, but streams of water for the thirsty people willing to listen to you, to us. Companionship for the journey. Lifelines. And we all need a lifeline. So whatever our lifeline might be, whatever our prayer language is, God is listening. God is responding, and friends, that truly is a love supreme. Coltrane concluded that poem, God breathes through us so completely, so gently, we hardly feel it, yet it is our everything. Thank you, God. Amen.